I hated who I was. A young man on the brink of suicide. I took the 22 caliber pistol and, and loaded all nine shells. I cocked back the hammer. See how his despair turned into a journey of healing. There's got to be another way. And a TV show. I really do believe your pain is your platform. Plus, Ephraim Graham shares what's happening in the world of entertainment, all on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio 5. At number five. Big news from the Kingdom Choir, the gospel group who performed at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding. We're about to go into the studio to record an album called Stand By Me. The record deal with Sony Music will bring a full album to fans in November. This wedding performance reached number one on the Billboard Gospel Charts and has been viewed more than 10 million times. Completely unexpected, a little bit surreal. I'm still trying to process it all, but it's, it's lovely, really. At number four, the extraordinary life of Madam C.J. Walker. Welcome to Walk the 16, man. Hidden Figure star Octavia Spencer will play another real-life pioneer in Madam C.J. Walker, a new Netflix series about America's first black self-made female millionaire. Spencer will also co-executive produce with NBA star LeBron James. When Madam Walker died, it was almost as if the reaction to Mandela. People lined up all along Broadway in Irvington, New York, just to get a glimpse of the casket. At number three, we've told you LeBron James is making a movie, but the happy filmmaker and NBA star has even bigger news. Now he wants to make kids in his hometown of Akron, Ohio, happy too. This week, the LeBron James Family Foundation is opening a public school for at-risk youth. I know exactly what these kids today are going through being a part of this. And on the fourth grade, I missed 80 days of school. We didn't have a car. Uh, the city bus didn't come to where, you know, where, where I was living. Um, but anytime I would show up to school, it's weird. The teachers would always tell my mom that when he shows up, he's one of the best students that we have. We just hope that he can show up more. I can sit here and be a loss of words, which I am now. We literally have a school. It's a real life school, you know, in my hometown. And this is, uh, this is, this is pretty cool. At number two. Relevant Magazine reports Netflix is looking to create more faith and family-focused content. Okay. First question. Very important for a job. Do you go to church? Amma, you can't ask that. No, it's okay. I don't mind. Yes, I do go to church. That's where I saw your ad. Me too. What ad? Good. Cool. Christian? Korea? Original programming executive Cindy Holland broke the news at this weekend's Television Critics Association Summer Press Tour, saying, It's a very important audience to us and represents a significant percent of the population, not only in the U.S., but around the world. This is a park. I think to you, Crick, the most close. <laughs> You're welcome, Pastor Choi. Until Mrs. Akim walk in with the twice as many. Two times more. He's nothing. You welcome. At number one, our favorite teddy bear moves from the pages of books to the big screen. And Studio 5 is behind the scenes. Christopher Robin said we should go north. Chatting with the furry stars. So how much fun did you have making this movie? Well, I was allowed to do my own stunts. And um, sometimes even on purpose. Oh, before we keep going, um, you wouldn't happen to have any um, honey, would you? Oh, I'm fresh out, so sorry. What to do, what to do, what to do. What to do indeed. Who? Christopher Robin. With an all-grown-up Christopher Robin, the Disney film reunites Winnie the Pooh and all our furry friends in the Hundred Acre Wood and hits American theaters on August 3rd. So, Eeyore, what drew you to this project? Well, um, 
it's not like I'm that busy anyway. <laughs> How much fun did you have making the movie? Uh, hmm. Define fun. All right, I'm with. <laughs> I'm not a bear, but I'm with Ephraim. <laughs> yes. um, no, maybe I'm a bear. Um, <laughs> what, what was that like? That was uh, number. The film is so good. I can't wait to take my daughter to see it. She's ten. She will love it. Uh, she to this day has a Pooh Bear in her room after all these years. And I grew up loving Winnie she, the she Pooh as well. She will have a Pooh Bear <laughs> yes. for a long for a time. For a long, long time. Yeah. Once you become attached, yeah. it's very difficult. She still does. To she has one. From yeah. Pooh the, Bear won't let it go. The film very well done, very well written, very well cast, um, and. And it just seems so real. Uh, I think people will enjoy it. I laughed the entire time. Eeyore is my favorite character because I think he's sometimes my approach to life. He's kind of like how I feel. <laughs> he says the You're things that, that I busy feel like, anyway, huh? oh, whatever. Here we go <laughs> again. So he's my favorite, but uh, it, was, it was a great film. Great film. Great film. Enjoy. Yes. Liked it. And right. we'll love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Netflix, going into Faith and Family. Absolutely. Um, why? Well, uh, I think part of it is the executive who has made the decision. In 2018, they plan to have at least 700 new original programs available on the site. Mm -hmm. uh, and they won't say specifically how much of a commitment they're going to give to, to Faith and Family family products, but they are committed to that. And the executive who's made the decision said, this is what she actually grew up with. So she grew up in a family of faith and she wants to see more of that. And we're seeing the demand. The, the show that you saw in there is called um, Kim's Convenience. And it really is about uh, a Korean Christian family living in Canada uh, and the travails of them uh, navigating their faith, raising two young children. You saw their mom trying to find a Christian boy for her daughter to marry. Uh, and and it's funny and it's doing well. It's actually trending uh, among the top programs right now on Netflix. So they're seeing, oh, people want this. The demand is there. It's a big shift for them it. because, you know, t to date, it's been sort of edgy content, mm -hmm. um, maybe to a degree trying to imitate uh, HBO and Showtime. Absolutely. And then uh, a lot of superhero content mm -hmm. and, and documentary content. Yeah. So now... Faith and family. It's nice to see because we see have seen a lot of content creators leaving the regular network because they can be more edgy on Netflix and coming up with deals deals for that. And now we're going to see some more faith and family friendly product. On Is this well. going to be a broad industry thing? I think so. I think the people are realize we, we're seeing it seems like week after week more and more realizing yes. People of faith want good content. Yes, we want good stories. Uh, and we are. We're providing the, the, you the audience and, and their response. I think the biggest thing is we want content that you can watch as a family. Absolutely. That you don't have to say, well, you know, let me explain this part. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, let's yes, skip yes, this yes, part yes. or, you know, where's the fast forward? Exactly. And, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you've got to watch it twice because you've got to watch it alone first and say, okay, can we do this? And then, <laughs> then we can actually sit down and go, okay, we, this is one we can handle. So it's nice to see that they're recognizing that. All right, let's talk about Madam C.J. Walker. That's also mm -hmm. going to be on Netflix. That is going to be on Netflix. It's a deal with Octavia Spencer and LeBron James. They talked about this uh, last year. Madam C.J. Walker is the first self-made millionaire uh, among African Americans. She died in 1919. This is a woman who created uh, beauty and hair care products for women. She was orphaned at age seven, married at age 14 and then widowed at age 20. She literally went from being a washerwoman, as you're seeing in the video there, to actually becoming a millionaire selling products that she sort of accidentally developed, just trying to take care of her own hair. She would go to the women and say, I'll sell you the product, I'll do the service for free in terms of putting the chemical in your hair. All I need you to do is to buy the product. You buy the product. And what the product did was actually help to improve their scalp, which then helped to improve their hair growth. So she called it a miracle hair um, formula when she began. But it really was to take care, better care for their scalp. Uh, Madam C.J. Walker, I think I first learned of her when I was in college. I still don't know the full story. This will be an eight episode series on Netflix. That's well, an incredible story, it is. from what I know. The, mm -hmm. She started out orphan, yeah. uh, picking cotton yes. in the South, Absolutely. in the segregated <laughs> yes. South. Mm -hmm. Goes from there to, she get, graduates from the cotton field to washing clothes. Yes. Graduates from that to working in the kitchen. That gives her the idea, well, I can make things for yeah. 
for women. Mm -hmm. I can make hair products for women. And it goes from there. She's she built her own factory. Yeah, she's which amazing. Is, amazing. It, yeah. the, the, the series is, is based on her great granddaughters. Her great granddaughters have written several books about her, but it's based on one of those books. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, LeBron James has a school. Yes. And he seems to be really <laughs> proud of it. It is, he said, despite all the many things he's done in the NBA, this is what he's most proud of. And it's called I Promise School because it's a promise that he made even as a young kid growing up in Akron that if I mm. ever make it, I will give back to this city. And he said in his, his speech at the school, it doesn't matter that I'm going to Los Angeles. Akron will always be home to me. They're starting out with 240 kids. Uh, I believe it's third and fourth grade. They're going to expand year after year. It'll be K through eight. And he has promised that 2,300 kids, at least 2,300, will receive a college scholarship from him to the University of Akron over the course of this development. So they've uh, got to meet some required criteria. High school to the pros. Yes, yes. And he and, wants, yes. And now, okay. He wants to educate, send them Now, is this a private school? Is this part of the school system? This is, a part, this is part of the school system. It is a charter school, but it is part of the Akron Public School System. It's a partnership with Akron Public Schools and the LeBron James Family Foundation. He and his mom, as you heard, they grew up in, a, in Akron, Ohio. She could hardly afford to get him to school half of the time. Yeah. I think he said 80 days in fourth grade he missed. And well, I can't imagine not being on the bus route. That, you know? That, that's, Yeah. That's really, really amazing, all that he's managed to accomplish. Well, it's amazing that he made it. Yes. He, he knows that there but for the grace of God, there go I. And he is literally, they, in terms of choosing the 240 students for this school, all of them are testing below their, at least two grades below their reading level. So they're looking for the most needy children to give them an opportunity and a leg up here. Yeah. 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 Yay, LeBron. Yeah. My son's a big fan of LeBron James. Yeah. I'm a fan of Steph Curry, but really? I have to give him. Oh. So you're not you're not gonna root for the Lakers? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, not no, happening. Not happening. Not happening. No, not, not, right. not now. Not ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens when your son comes in with a hat and the banner and the poster and everything? He's already got the LeBron shirts it's, that he's, he's got around the house, giving me a hard time as it is. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> all right. Will he make the finals again? <laughs> we'll see. Well, they're telling me after wrap. So for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. And Ephraim, once again, thanks for being here. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, coming up, a boy on the verge of suicide. I took the 22 caliber pistol and loaded all nine shells. I pulled the gun up and I lowered my head down between my legs and began to squeeze on the trigger. You won't believe what happens next. Stay with us to see a miracle unfold. Jay Louder struggled with depression and anxiety. He hated life and hated himself even more. Jay thought there was only one way out, suicide. 21 years of age, I decided to end my life. I uh, was a dropout of college and lost my girlfriend and my job and my car. A lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. I contemplated taking my life for quite some time. I hated who I was. One afternoon I woke up about 12.30 and I decided this is it. Life is no longer worth living. I'm gonna end my life. I, uh, I took the 22 caliber pistol that I kept underneath my sofa. We were in a pretty rough part of town and took it out and, and loaded all nine shells. I cocked back the hammer, uh, I, I pulled the, the gun up. I can still remember the barrel, because my hand was shaking, tapping the right side of my temple. And I lowered my head down between my legs and began to squeeze on the trigger. As I'm squeezing the trigger, I hear somebody pull up on the gravel driveway outside. I had a roommate who worked for his father, and he never came home on lunch break. And so I rush back over to the sofa, disengage the hammer, turn on the television, wipe the tears off my eyes, and, and just try to pretend like everything was okay. And he walked in the door and I said, man, what are you doing home? But he said, man, my dad came up to me and said, why don't you take the second half of the day off and I'll pay you anyway. You've been working really hard. And I'm thinking, this is the biggest coincidence. A few weeks later, he came home one night and he said, I gave my life to Christ tonight. Oh, come on, man. Really? I mean, you're from California. I I've known you my whole life. 
I, I've been to church. I've been there, done that. It's not real. And I know you. And I'm telling you, within two weeks, we'll be back at the bar. If, if you make it that long. But man, I'm telling you what, there was a change. I've never seen somebody so completely turned around. And so later, uh, my mother had seen a commercial where there was a guy that was gonna be visiting our city doing a multi-church event. And the end of the commercial was this guy talking about a suicide attempt. A few weeks later, um, around came this, this, this big event. Well, I walked in, I decided to go in. I walked in the balcony. I grew up in church, so I've heard Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave and honestly, big deal. But he went into great detail. It was unlike, I mean, even sitting here talking about it, it was unlike anything I'd ever heard because it was so, it was so detailed. It was so crisp, it was so real that when he told the story, it was like I was watching the story, spinning his face and ripping off his beard and being uh, driving six inch spikes in his hand and nine inch spikes in his feet. And he got to the end and he said, um, he quoted this verse in John 3, 36, he that has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life, but the wrath of God is on him. And I'm like, that's me. I mean, I'm living, but I'm dying. I don't have a life, I have an existence. And I mean, it was like I'd been hit with a javelin. I just know at that moment I realized that I was guilty of the murder of Jesus Christ. You know, it was me that had crucified him. It was me that hit him with a cat and nine tails. It was me that had cleared my throat and spit in his face and said, you're a phony. At that moment, more than anything in my life to this day, I've never wanted anything the way I wanted to know him. I've had religion, but I've never had a relationship. I've, I've had stories, but I've never had, I've never really had the sun. Nothing tonight is gonna keep me away from Christ. When I finished praying, there was peace. Peace was a big deal. When you sit there day after day thinking about blowing your brains out, and out of nowhere you experience peace, it's worth everything. I wanted immediately to take this, this healing, this forgiveness, this rescue, and provide it as an option to other people. I was walking the streets, an unknown guy, talking to prostitutes and homeless people and addicts and winos. The local Salvation Army, they gave me a slot. I was preaching there all the time. But in the midst of all that, you know, we always realize that there's got to be another way. The message doesn't change what methods do. We uh, launched a late night television show on secular programming. The darkest hour is a backdoor approach to the gospel. And uh, we have people every race, color, creed. We have people, literally former strippers, gang bangers, people that have been in prison for murder. We've got white collar, blue collar, no collar. People from every walk of life that have just, they've been stuck in the ditch. But in the midst of their pain, we're rescued by God. My mother once told me, God can never fully use a man until he's first fully broken him. Without doubt, we've seen thousands upon thousands of people genuinely born again. I mean, I'm not talking about just made some commitment, but people that have truly been radically transformed by the grace of Christ. And we all heard David and Goliath. But to me, the cool part of the story is, is David ends up cutting off Goliath's head with the very sword that Goliath brought to cut off David's. And I believe that's how God works. He wants to take the weapons that the enemy brings against us and put those in our hands as a tool to combat the enemy. I really do believe your pain is your platform. But what does it take to get to that platform? What does it take to finally have the reversal that you need so that you can look back on your life and realize your pain is actually now a weapon in your hands where you can go out and do wonderful things for God based on your history. What does it take to have that turnaround? Well, Jay says it very clearly. It takes that surrender where it's not your will, it's not your way, but it's God's way, where you finally surrender to Jesus Christ. You surrender to his love, you surrender to his sacrifice, you surrender to his forgiveness, you surrender all. And that's why his grandmother said, you know, God can't use somebody until they're first fully broken. There's another way to look at it, until you're first 
fully surrendered, that it's not your will anymore, but it's his will. Jesus shows us the way, and he shows us the way in the Garden of Gethsemane, where here he is, he's lived a sinless life. Uh, there's, there's nothing he has ever done wrong. And yet God requires him to offer himself as a sacrifice. And at first, Jesus says, is there another way? Can this cup pass from me? But then he surrenders and says, not my will, but your will be done. And it's that point that all of us as Christians need to reach where we're willing to surrender all. We're willing to go the extra mile to do whatever is necessary because that's what Jesus wants from us. He wants us to be fully surrendered to him. Nothing left back. Now, if this is for you, if you want this turnaround, where you're not living life on your terms, but you're living life on his terms, well, then pray with me. And the answers you're seeking will come. You'll have that identification with him, just as Jay did. He identified with the cross. He identified that he was the one that put Jesus there, that the sacrifice was for him, not in some general way, but in a very personal way. And when you have that identification, well, then all things become possible for you, not based on your will or your wants or your desires, but the things that God wants, the thing that God desires, will then become possible for you. Pray with me and receive it. It's a wonderful gift. It's a wonderful adventure, but it starts with surrender. Let's pray now. Jesus, that's right, just say his name, say it out loud, Jesus. I come to you and there's nothing I have to offer but myself. So I bow down right now before you and I say, I surrender all, all my dream, all my ambition, all my desire, I surrender it all to you. And I ask that you would come in, that you would be the ruler of my heart, that you would forgive me of all the things that I've done wrong, and set me free from every bondage, every sin, break every chain. And Jesus, if you do this, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it now in your name. Amen. Father, for those who just prayed, fill them with your love. Fill them to overflowing, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody else know. We've made it easy for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day. What do you do now? How do you live the Christian life? What do Christians believe? It's all free. All you have to do is call us. Well, still to come, a mother fears for her and her children's lives. And she see how she's finally able to break free from her abusive husband when we come back. At CBN, we help people all around the world start new lives, including one desperate mother in Georgia who had to flee her abusive husband. 43-year-old Irma lived with an abusive husband for 13 years. Her worst memories are not of the violence she endured, but of the suffering of her three children. It was like death for me when he would beat our small children. When my Tamara was only two years old, I heard her cries as he beat her. I rushed in to save her and then he beat me. Irma's greatest fear was that one day her husband would kill them all. So after years of abuse, she left him and took all her children. 
I explained that I wouldn't have proper house, food or money. They all said, yes, we will starve rather than stay here. As a single mother with three children, Irma received $45 a month in government support. It was only enough for two weeks of food. They were starving together with me. They got sick too and almost died because we had no medicine. I said to myself, Irma, you have to do something. Irma had knitting and sewing skills, so she began to take yarn from existing clothing to make new ones to sell. But with no money for supplies, she could only knit and sell a few items. I began to pray to God, please provide me with yarn and fabric so that I can make more money to feed my family. A church that partners with CBN's Orphan's Promise heard about Irma and her children. We brought food and a special invitation to the Orphan's Promise Training Center hosted by the church. I enjoy being in the center. I have many friends there. The kids always come home full from there. They say, Mom, we have already eaten. But we wanted to do more to help Irma. So we bought her a sewing machine and all the supplies she needs to start a small business. It is a joyful day for me. I will be able to sew bedding and towels and knit sweaters and hats with the help of your gifts. I am very happy. Please accept a very big thank you from all of us. My kids no longer go hungry. Everything is fine with us now. Thank you so much for that. If you're a member of the 700 Club, thank you. You're part of that blessing. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to be a member of the 700 Club. When you call and join, I've got something for you. It's a wonderful premium by my father about angels. Uh, and if you want to know more about angels, their purpose, their power, uh, what their assignments are, uh, it's yours when you join the 700 Club for a pledge of $20 a month or more. And if you want to designate your giving into Orphan's Promise and really help the people who are struggling to keep families together, uh, children who are desperately at need, at risk, uh, you can do it by saying, I want to give to Orphan's Promise. All you have to do is call and say, I want to designate my gift to Orphan's Promise, or you can go to cbn.com. There's a place online where you can designate your giving. Do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Isaiah chapter 43, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. 